You're on. Hi, everybody. It's Monday night. It is April 6th, and it's tea time. And, uh, you know, what can I say? Normally, I talk about my weekend, and um, not much is going on these days on the weekend. So, um, you know, just TV and movies and that's about it just doing stuff around the house i want to actually get to my guests because you know my hour goes fast um peppy cardone is in the house from alive and kicking known for his one hit wonder tighter and tighter hi peppy how you doing honey hello tea time Teresa. hello everybody out there <laughs> and how you're coming doing? to me you're coming to me live from detroit that's right st Clair shores michigan that's right. right, Michigan. Right by Detroit. Michigan, and you were just in New York. Um, first of all, let's let's start by you are a Bronx boy originally. Well, no, not really. I've become no. a Bronx boy, but I'm originally a Brooklyn boy. Ah, uh, okay, originally a Brooklyn boy. Sorry yeah. about that. And then uh, I know you um, you love the Bronx and you love the Yankees, huge Yankee fan. And um, yep. you and I actually, you joined the cast of Bat Boy and you uh, wrote an original song, which we're going to get to in a little while, um, you know, when Thurman Munson passed away. Um, and in the meantime, your career started many, many, many years ago. And I want to know how you got started in this crazy industry of music. Okay, well, uh, my friend Bruce Sedano, Okay, yeah. he and I formed Alive and Kicking. We had been in uh, groups uh, in the Brooklyn, uh, Midwood section of Brooklyn area. And yeah. uh, it's funny you should ask that because he, when he does interviews, he uh, has to answer the same questions the same way. Okay, so, <laughs> and then I, so I said, you know, I wonder how many people have heard me do the interviews, podcasts, what have you, and right. have to say the same thing all over again. They probably already know the whole story. So he said, yeah, I know, I'm kind of getting bored. Uh, I, I think I want to throw out there some like false information just to uh, alleviate my boredom. And he says, well, what do you mean? He says, oh, well, you know, maybe I could say I was raised by wolves. You know, something <laughs> like that. So I got to think of, I got to think of something to top that. Okay, you, you ask me a question, I'm going to tell you all over again the same thing. All right. All right. Actually, uh, but all right, so you want me to tell the truth? Yeah, I mean, you, you've had, listen, you've had an amazing career. You've, yeah. you've, you've been on the biggest stages. You were on Bandstand with Dick Clark. I mean, this is, this, yeah. you've had, you've had such a beautiful career and I really want people to know, you know, how you got there, where you started from, and, and how you got there. Well, since you mentioned Bandstand, yeah, uh, here's, bandstand. A story. here's a story I don't tell that often. Uh, we were ushered into, uh, you know, what the green room is yeah. uh, of the studio. Yeah. And uh, there's Dick Clark uh, comes up and uh, introduces himself, wow. which was kind of funny to us at the time because he walks in the door and we all say or think to each other, wow, it's Dick Clark. And he says, hi, guys, I'm Dick Clark. You know, uh -huh. I thought it was funny that he should introduce himself. <laughs> like you, you know? don't know who he but is. I guess, I guess it's something you do, right? You know, hi, I'm Pepe Cardona. You know, now that I have the notoriety that uh, Dick Clark had, you know. But he was very gracious, and uh, he uh, came and shook uh, all our hands and said hello. And... Um, yeah, I remember he asked something about my nationality, and I told him I was uh, born in Puerto Rico, and huh? uh, etc. And he was just very nice. It was awesome. All right. And you, so and you, so you formed Alive and Kick In, and this was back in nineteen what? <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, actually, the late nineteen sixty eight and wow. into sixty nine, uh -huh. uh, we kind of honed our honed our craft. And mm -hmm. uh, in 69, uh, finally, we managed to meet uh, Tommy James. Tommy James Shondells. with the Shondells, right? Right. Yeah. Uh, his, uh, his wife, Ronnie, at the time, knew uh, my uh, lead vocalist, Sandy's sister-in-law, very well. They were best friends. Right. So 
that was like very that was <laughs> that a thing. so we managed to get tommy james to come down to this little club in brooklyn and uh, catch us it was called the hullabaloo club and uh-huh. it was a you know back then all the uh, uh all the clubs were cavernous they were i mean rooms and what have you you know and the hullabaloo was really big and it was a sunday night Mm-hmm. So there was hardly anybody there at all, you know, and I can still picture Tommy James sitting uh, all alone in the dark. Right. Uh, about 50 feet away, listening to the band. And uh, he loved us. And, you know, the rest is history. <laughs> and he said, he said he wrote this song, right? He said to you, I wrote a song. Yeah. He well, he wrote this song. Want- well, he had this song in the can he had called Crystal Blue Persuasion. Right, Chris. Oh, what a great song! Yeah. So uh, we, uh, you know, obviously it was a great song. Yeah. And uh, you know, so we decided to uh, to uh, follow his advice, and we learned the song. And uh, then he kind of came up to came to his senses and realized what a good song that was. Yeah. And so he decided to record it on his own. Right. You know, so you know, he took it, and and you know, we figured, all right, there goes our shot. <laughs> you know, that's too bad. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, he, he, said he got had another to, song, right? <laughs> yeah, right. He had this other song that he came down with a couple of months later and said, you know, this one's a lot better because it has a girl part. You know, you know, I got to show you nobody else. Right. You. And then it has a boy part. I want you to touch my soul now. Honey, don't you know, et cetera. So yeah. uh, I said, all right, great. We'll try it. So yeah. when he took us into the studio, yeah, we didn't have to rehearse for that because what? really, no, we didn't have to. Just the vocalists. That's it. Because he would, he refused to let the band play the song recorded. He didn't oh. think we were savvy enough in the recording studio. He, he uses uh, studio musicians. Really, Just like everybody then. Then yeah, a lot of. I mean, uh, you you've seen the documentary on the Motown. Yeah. How, how they, you know, they played all the songs of the Beach Boys and what have you, you know. So yeah, yeah, he, yeah. he said, OK, don't worry about it. And he's, he brought in a whole musicians, uh, you know, studio musicians. They were all all like all over 40, you know, which to uh-huh. me was old at the time, you know, 40 <laughs> and 50. <laughs> and now I'm thinking, wow, OK, wow, I wish I was 40 and 50 now, you know. Um, and uh, so we just did the vocals. Uh, we learned all the, you know, the harmonies and what have you. And yeah. went into the studio, recorded it, and uh, and that was pretty cool. So tighter and tighter, you recorded and performed, and that that song became a one hit wonder. And you you everywhere you went, you sang that song, including on American Bandstand, yeah, and and, and a lot of other venues. You want to mention some of the other places you performed? Oh that my goodness. Day? Well, well, we toured the country. You toured, so, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we did a lot of TV shows along the way yeah. as we made our way from, uh, well, actually, we went from east, the east coast, flew to uh, the west coast to do the American Bandstand show, right. and then made our way across back east again, doing uh, uh, TV shows along the way in Houston and Cleveland, and uh, eventually in New York, where we did... Uh, uh, the oh New Jersey, the Jersey uh, Trenton, uh, Jersey State Fair, uh-huh. and um, uh, oh my goodness, uh, oh Madison Square Garden, they gave us our uh, our gold records. Wow, uh, Madison Square Garden. Yeah, we were opening up for Eric Burden and War. They had this great <laughs> song at the time called "Spill the Wine." Take that girl, all right, all right. Spill the wine. Okay. So um, we opened up for them and. Uh, they brought us our gold records on stage. Wow. wow. Where do you keep your gold record? Well, it's in my office upstairs. Uh, uh, yeah. I'm right downstairs now in the, in the in the den. Yeah. And uh, in my office, I have it like nice. Uh, 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 fortunately, what I didn't know, and I don't normally, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think of things that normally people don't normally hear from me. Okay. So I had hung it in my apartment in Brooklyn for the huh? longest time. And there was sunshine shining on it. Okay. Oh, wow. So, oh. Unfortunately. Don't tell me it faded. It faded. <laughs> oh. Yeah. So the, the, roulette, the roulette record label is bright orange and yellow. Okay. Oh. And if you see my gold record now, it's 
pale orange and pale yellow. You know? <laughs> so it doesn't have those cool orange and yellow colors sticking out, you know. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. but trust me, it is the original gold record. Uh, the reason I say that is because uh, uh, the lead singer at the time with me, Sandra Toder, mm -hmm. she decided she wanted to check what was actually on that record. So she okay. took the gold record apart, took the record out and played it, and it was some, some song that she never heard before. So yeah. apparently they just took a disc, uh -huh. sprayed it gold, put the label on it, and <laughs> put it up there. So who knows what's on my record? I might go, right. it could be, uh, they're coming to take me away. Ha ha. <laughs> 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 oh my God. That's, I'll never that know is... because I'm not going to open it. All right. So. No, no, no. That's hysterical. All right. Listen, we're going to come back. We got to uh, do my sponsors real quick. Stay there. Don't go away. We'll be right back with Pepe Cardona. <laughs> okay. All right. Today's show is brought to you in part by Tavolo Kitchen and Pizza, located at 1919 Wantaw Avenue in Wantaw. Hey, there's something for every night of the week. Tuesdays, pasta night, wine Wednesdays, Friday, live music from 7 to 10, Sunday brunch. So check them out at 516-308-4892 or www.tavolokitchen.com. They're also on Instagram. They do catering and private parties. So where do you want to go tonight? Are you bored? Oh, oh my god! <laughs> Hold on tight. We're gonna coast this. Peppy. <laughs> sure. Hey, we're back. We're mm. back. It's tea time, and I'm with my friend Peppy Cardona. Peppy, Peppy is a singer songwriter, but Peppy's also an actor. Peppy. I am. You, you were in a movie called Bat Radicus, and I actually went oh. to the premiere with my go our good friend Grace. Oh right? yeah, yeah, right, right. You were like the head zombie. zombie. <laughs> the head zombie. <laughs> it's great. It was great. I had such a good time. And you did a great, you you were great in the movie, I have to say. You scared me. Well, <laughs> how hard is it to play a zombie? You know? You go, hey, it takes, mm -hmm. <laughs> it takes talent. Yeah, roughly. <laughs> is, that the only, is that the only movie or acting you've done, or have you done something else? Well, uh, earlier in my career, yeah. right around 71, 72, a lot of people don't know that Alive and Kicking actually broke up right. at that time. Yeah. Okay, they broke up for a couple of years. Uh, there was a lot of infighting going on and we just didn't get along and, and whatever. So um, when we broke up, I was uh, uh, one year removed from a gold record. Wow. Uh, and uh, I was at a, a teller at a Sixth Avenue uh, bank. Wow. For about a year. I was at a printer's uh, shop for another year. Right. I mean, it was ridiculous, you know. So, so, so what like, I just... It wasn't like a was it like a, like a two year hiatus? Is that what it was? Yeah, almost? it was bad. It's actually, let me see. It was almost four years. Wow, that long. Yeah. yeah, it was really long. You know, wow. um, I, I decided to to hone my craft. Right. Okay, because until that point, I was just uh, a garage band singer. You know, that just right. you know right. we we got lucky. Uh, we, the, our whole first album was full of originals. Yes, which are really cool, and uh, which is good. But uh, I decided to uh, study dance and acting and uh, uh, vocal lessons, what have you. Right. So, uh, so I went to Off-Broadway and tried to audition, like all the many times that you audition for uh, yeah. you know, things. And yeah. uh, how are your auditions going on, by the way? My auditions? I, yeah. actually, I actually auditioned not that long ago for a movie. It's okay. an independent film. We were supposed to start filming this month. We were supposed to start filming... Um, April, May, and June, but it's being postponed. Um, I can't say too much about it, but I'm excited about, you know, actually having a, you know, a, a, a nice, you know, part in this movie. And I'm excited, yeah, yeah. That, you know, when we could start filming. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, it's tough right now. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. And I miss my Bat Boy family and you and you you were in Bat Boy. You actually wrote uh, an original song about Thurman Munson after he passed away. You actually wrote it like a week after he died. Yeah, yeah, pretty good. Yeah, uh, won't be the same without you. Um, uh, you know what's what's great about this song is that it can pertain to anybody yes. because I only say Thurman at the very end of the song. I go, right. Hey Thurman. In right. our hearts, you always will remain. Right, you know, so, right. So a lot of people throughout the years, when they've lost uh, someone close to them, uh, it resonated uh, yeah. immediately yeah. with them. Won't be the same without you. Memories are all we have. Well, it's, you know, it's about yeah. losing someone. And, and it uh, we can all relate to that. We've all had loss. And, and what's going on now, it's even, you know, more profound. Yeah. Um, yeah, without you know, a doubt. It, can we can we play that? Can we play that song and we'll li we'll listen to it with our listeners? Yeah, you bet. Yeah, yeah, let's 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 cue it up and then we'll talk about it a little after. This is um okay. this is introduce the song, Peppy. Okay, won't be the same without you, uh written uh by Vito Albano, uh which was our drummer in live and kicking Woody Wilson, the uh the guitar player, and um myself. Nice. That's Albano nice. Wilson Cardona. <laughs> Won't be the same without you. Won't be the same without you. Memories are all we have, all we have to remember you back. Won't be the same without you. No one else can take your place. In our hearts you always will remain Tragedies, they happen And no one can explain But to me it's so unfair In fact it seems insane And I feel so bad Don't it feel so sad it Won't be the same No one else can take your place In our hearts you always will remain Won't be the same without you And oh, I will miss your style And the way you play the game For oh, you were so misunderstood You kept it all Ah, oh, but still you did the best you could You were one hell of a guy And it's such a shame Oh, don't you feel the pain Don't you feel it Don't you feel the Hey, thank you 
so much. Is that what a beautiful song? I mean, what a beautiful song. The the lyrics are so touching. Um, I remember I got a little verklempt the first time Peppy sang sang that. Uh, we um, you were asked to sing that at the Bat Boy show, and um, you actually wrote that song a week after Thurman Munson died. Um, I mean, I'm assuming that it's just something you were overwhelmed like everyone else about his death that was so um you know uh, unexpected and um you you sang that song in the bronx for actually we celebrated thurman's 40th anniversary his right. passing and the 50 years that he, ago that he was with the yankees um and uh you know when you had put in his wife's name diana and his children's name and uh made it even more personal and special yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, that was a lot of fun uh, rewriting the lyrics. Um, it, it just, uh, it, 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 you know, it, it's like a spurt of of mental energy that just mm. enters you. Uh, like what I, I wrote the the words to when I rewrote the words to Elton John's "I'm Still Standing Today." Right, right. Uh, I did it in 15 minutes. The thoughts just came right out and I'm like writing wow. down like, furiously before they let my mind, you know? Uh, yeah. It's uh, inspiration. It's magical uh, when it happens that way, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It, it is. really is. And yeah. if I stop for like one second to yeah. answer the phone or text, the inspiration is gone. Right. Yeah. You know, it, I have to like really focus and let my thoughts take me. Right. Where they may. You know? Yeah. And the energy, the energy, the energy is so intense that it just, it just flows. It just flows. Yeah. Yeah. It you're really like in that something. zone. I know. I know. Yeah. <laughs> you would know you're a, uh, you're it's an a beautiful thing. Life. I mean, I, I, you know, like I'm not, look, I, I, I sing, but not like you and my husband, you guys are amazing. And I've written a little bit, but, um, when something comes to you, it's like writing a joke, you know, when something comes to me, Again, it's something where you have to take pen to paper really fast and write it down. And again, no interruptions because it's there and you don't want to, you know, lose the intensity of it. So I, I yeah. totally, I totally get it. Yeah. Um, listen, I, I know that, um, you know, you, you, you're a big Yankee fan. I know it's your dream to sing the national anthem at Yankee stadium. And I know yeah. that me and a lot of other people want that to happen for you. So we're putting it out into the universe and hopefully yeah. that's going to happen. <laughs> happen okay. Okay. Um, let's talk about real quick. Um, let's talk about your son. Who's also very talented. You actually ah. not only perform with the live and kicking, but you actually do a, a duo show with your son. Yeah, he's so awesome, and uh, that's one of the things I miss the most yeah. during this time is because yeah. uh, he's back in Brooklyn, and every time I uh, fly into New York, of course, yeah. uh, you know, I'm doing my treatments, and uh, of course, we have to stay away from each other, and so this whole last yeah. month has been a wash, and who yeah. knows how much longer it is before I am able to, uh, you know, these po uh, these little uh, videos that I do in the Pepe Strong show, yeah. I'm doing them yeah. alone. And right. boy, do I wish Tim was right there, yeah. you know, doing the songs we do, harmonizing. He's and he's a great talented. singer and he's a great musician. Um, you know, you just mentioned yeah. treatment. Um, would you like to share with my audience and your fans of what exactly you were diagnosed with and what you're going through and how you are? Sure. Yeah. I was diagnosed with uh, pancreatic cancer stage three back in September. Um we went to Sloan Kettering and they diagnosed us. Uh, we didn't like their uh, reaction to it. So uh, we went for a second opinion just to yes. see. Which and, is very uh, important. Found, second opinions are very important. Yes. Yes. And uh, we found someone, my wife, Maria, and I found someone that we thought could help us, uh, uh, you know, uh, fight this. Right. And uh, he had a great protocol. Uh, the problem with his protocol is that no one else can duplicated. There is no other hospital that can touch that protocol because wow. there are certain uh, it's exclusive. Meds it's, it's exclusive. Yeah, well, the meds this one that he place uses. Doctor? Yeah. Yeah, uh, my doctor. He he uses this uh, this cocktail that okay. has some meds in it that are approved by Medicare, but a hospital won't be paid for it. So um, I can't do it in any other hospital here in Michigan. 
wherever. Wow. I have to fly back to New York every two weeks. Every two weeks two you're flying back. Months. Right. I know you posted a picture of there were only like four people on the plane with you, which in a way yeah. is great for you. Right. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, I know you had, you, you had your mask on, but oh, I yeah. mean, uh -huh. you know, yeah. so you fly, well, you fly. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. The only problem with that was that the all the ensuing flights for the rest of through April yeah. and into May, uh, I fly Spirit Airlines have all been canceled. Oh, geez. So, uh, we had to scramble uh, to find a, a flight out that right. Wednesday morning after my two days of chemo. Uh -huh. And uh, we managed to get on a Delta flight. And so we've uh, now uh, booked all our flights with Delta. Of course, they cost okay. three times as much as Spirit did. So. Oh, yeah. That's pretty bad, but yeah, what are you going to do? I, just, I have no choice. So No, you don't, and you don't. And, you know, we all continue to pray for your for your recovery and for your tenacity and for your 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 fight in you because, I, you know, you're, you're a person and a, and a man that I know that doesn't give up, and you have mm -hmm. so many people that love you and pray for you and, you know, and, and – Want you to kick this thing's ass, and I and I know that you're going to be back to yourself, and you're going to be singing with Tim and the band, and you know, and performing. Um, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk about our friend Gene DiNapoli, who did something for you a while ago that unfortunately I wasn't able to uh, be there. So stay tuned, people, because when we come back, Peppy's going to sing live. We'll be right back after these after my sponsors. <laughs> Today's show is brought to you in part by Tavolo Kitchen and Pizza, located at 1919 Wantaw Avenue in Wantaw. Hey, there's something for every night of the week. Tuesdays, pasta night, wine Wednesdays, Friday, live music from 7 to 10, Sunday brunch. So check them out at 516-308-4892 or www.tavolokitchen.com. They're also on Instagram. They do catering and private parties. So where do you want to go tonight? Why don't we go to Coasters? Oh, cool. I heard it's a great place. Let's check it out. Yeah, definitely. All right. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Time. We're back. We're back. We're back. This is tea time. I want to give some shout outs. Kristen Tinsley's watching. Valentina's watching. I want to say hello and everybody watching. My, my sister-in-law, Ann, is watching from Ohio. Happy. Uh, and we got Greg DiFilippo in Florida. Hi, honey. Thank you, Susan. Everybody watching and listening and tuning in. I'm so glad that you found us. I'm here every Monday night at 8 o'clock. I'm with Pepe Cardona. Pepe is a friend. He's a fellow actor. He's a singer. He's a songwriter. Um, and uh, he had a one-hit wonder, tighter and tighter, and was alive and kicking. He performs with the band. He performs with his son, Tim. Right now, he's in Detroit. He comes to New York every two weeks for, for treatments, and um, um, I'm just so excited to have you back on my show. And next time, the third time, you're going to be in studio. <laughs> yeah. So I can yeah. hug you, hug you, and kiss you, and love on you. <laughs> yeah, I love hugs. I know. I'm Italian. I miss touching people and hugging and kissing. Oh, I just want right. to. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, can you re can you remember the last person you touched besides your husband? Beside myself? <laughs> no, besides. <laughs> no, bad girl. Hey, hey you know, I gotta keep it funny, Peppy. No, uh, actually, Sean and I are actually keeping a six, <laughs> actually, Sean and I are keeping a um, six feet distance from us because he works in a hospital, as you know, and um, he has to sometimes go into the rooms with COVID patients. And um, we're taking every precaution when he comes home. He takes off his shoes. He changes. His clothes go in the wash. I wash them on hot. He he showers. He washes. I Lysol. I do whatever I can. But as an extra precaution, 
from each other, <laughs> which is which is fine. <laughs> That's fine. But let's get back to you because there's so much to talk about. Um, it's okay. You were you were diagnosed with stage three pancreatic cancer. It was a big shock to a lot of people. And um, Gene DiNapoli, who's also a mutual friend of ours, actually held a fundraiser at his restaurant at the time. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't be there. Um, and trying to raise funds um, for you, um, like you mentioning that you have to fly back and forth every two weeks, and 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 it, it's it's a strain. It, it, and you know, right now, no one's really working, which is makes it even harder on everybody because yeah. I mean, unless you own a supermarket or a pharmacy or a liquor store, because liquor stores are essential. Did you know that? <laughs> oh, yeah. Right. But um, I wanted to know, um, you know, how people can follow you, donate, help you. Um, and, I, and I want you to plug that before we get to your singing. <laughs> ah, OK. Well, as far as donating, uh uh, Gene Danopoli and Steve Michaels uh, generously donated their time to putting two fundraisers together. And uh, they raised a little bit of money for me. And that was really awesome. Uh, these fundraisers. Teresa, if you had been there, you would have been amazed at the electricity. I saw the video. I saw the video. The I saw it. Like I was there. And it was, it was, yeah. it was, the room was full of so much love. Yeah, it was really, really yeah. amazing. Uh, I, and, and and those two days were my chemo days. I too. know it was rough. So, it was rough for you. It was rough. Yeah, it and Ray yeah, Negron I mean, was and, and Ray Negron was there, and Steve Carroll were there. I know that Steve Steve and Ray talked to you. And, yes, and it, that yes. was sweet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that was awesome. But uh, I managed to drag myself there because. How could I miss this? You know, yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah. I stood there in the bag and I saw everybody come up and sing a song for me yeah. and throw out all these accolades, you know, <laughs> oh, and Pepe is this, Pepe is that, and I says, oh my God, I'm like overwhelmed, <laughs> you know, it was, uh, yeah, I've always helped people uh, throughout my career and uh, yes, yes, did fundraisers yeah. as many as I could yeah. and uh, when I could, uh, uh, but I never thought that it would, uh, come back to me this strongly, right. Right. you know, you never think about those things, you know, you just do them out of the goodness of your heart. Right. And if you're that kind of person, you know, then uh, it's great. But for it to come back at you while you're yeah. still alive. Yeah. Okay? Because you know, these yeah. people die and you watch the Oscars and you watch the Grammys in memoriam, you know, and then they, and then they talk right. about, well, right. you know, uh, Bill Withers, Right. was an incredible performer. He wrote these oh, I know. songs. And then, yes. da, da, da. Of course, you didn't hear them say that a week ago before he died. Right, you know, right. It's a shame it. that we have to, right, you're right. It's a shame that we have to wait till people aren't here any longer to really acknowledge them. And it's nice to be acknowledged while you're still here, like like yeah. the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I mean, it's nice that you want yeah. to honor people, but yeah, do it while here, you know yeah i didn't hear so that how do people do people follow you how oh i was saying how uh it's like being inducted into the rock and roll hall of fame you want you you're hoping that the people are actually here for it you know what i mean oh yeah. my goodness you hear well me? i don't yeah i can hear you now kind of delayed but right. um uh as far as the rock and roll hall of fame well i know there's this east coast Hall of Fame that uh -huh. I've been nominated for, you know, uh, I don't know much about that, but uh, nice. That's uh, but great. yeah, but the but the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, a friend of mine made, named uh, Big Lump. He's the uh -huh. drummer for this group called The Project, and okay. he went to the Hall of Fame uh, uh -huh. in the in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Cleveland, and he was looking through the records and Alive and Kicking. Yeah. with alphabetical order, was the first one that he came to. Wow. And he, and he, and he showed it to me. He took a picture. He's taken up the album, Alive and Kicking. So I am in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Nice. There <laughs> Some, you go. Uh, you know, in a small way. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, people can always. Um, uh, um, okay. You're on Facebook. No, you're on Facebook. Peppy Cardona yep. on Facebook, yep. right? Facebook. And um, I have yeah. my own uh, YouTube channel uh, called the uh, Peppy Strong Show. And Peppy I Strong have been Show. That's important. 
Peppy yeah. Strong Show. And that's on, it's on YouTube. YouTube. Yes. And they could catch all my uh, videos that I post. Uh -huh. I've been posting uh, the Peppy Strong Show episodes. Uh, I just mm -hmm. did number 19 uh, wow, today. That's great. And yeah. uh, that was that that, that was great because I went out to all the healthcare uh, the people out there, uh, you know, that are working hospitals and everything. And uh, yeah, um, so, that was right, so listen. Um, how about maybe a verse, uh, the first verse or a verse and the chorus of uh, of uh, live and uh, kicking? What do you title and title? Uh, what do you think? Uh, okay. You up to uh, it. Uh, all right, let's do it. Here we go. Yeah. So, uh, in fact. Uh, let me uh, pull out. Yeah. <laughs> tighter. What's the song again? It's. I think it's called. Tighter. I think it's called tighter and tighter. Yeah. Uh huh. I think that's. I think that's the song. <laughs> okay. So there is a uh, there is a track on here uh -huh. that actually that guy can sing to a little bit. Why not? You know. Okay. Now, okay. So of course you got to remember that. Um, that it's a girl and a boy. It's a guy and a girl, yes. Right. Yeah. I, I like to say girl and a boy for some reason. I don't know why. All right. Okay. Uh, girl and a boy, guy and a girl. <laughs> guy and a girl. Okay. And um, so the first... Okay. We can hear, can it. hear it. Yeah. So the girl sing is at the beginning, but I'll sing both parts. Go ahead. You've done it before. You know I got to show you Nobody else before you ever gave us too beautiful feeling. In my part. A woman you touch on my soul now. Honey, don't you let go now. Hold on, baby, just a little bit tighter. Hold on, just a little bit tighter now, baby. I love you so much and I can't let go. No, no, no. Hold on. Just a little bit tighter now, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Woo yeah. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay. Such a, it's such a classic song and everyone hears it. They, you know, I'll say to someone, oh yeah, Peppy, tight on tight. And they're like, huh, huh? And as soon as I start singing that song, yeah, yeah, first, yeah, yeah. they're like, oh yeah, I know that song. <laughs> I know. And, and the bad part is that they don't even remember the name of the group either. Uh, alive and you know, Kicking. It's yeah, Alive, alive and kicking. kicking. Yeah, it's Alive and Kicking. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, um, it's Alive and Kicking. That's what it is. But, and uh, you're, you're alive right. and you're kicking. You're kicking and you're going to keep kicking, Peppy. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So listen, um, let's talk about your new project. You have a new project going on that you want to discuss. Oh, yeah. Well, you know what? It actually uh, follows with uh, what you just said. Uh, was that by design? Oh, May good. I, I got a nice segue. There you go. Yeah, that was a perfect segue because <laughs> you said, oh, as soon as you hear that song, you know, you just like love it, you know, and it yeah. brings back people to those wonderful days of the 70s. Well, yeah. um, it, it turns out that this uh, uh, co-producer of this, uh, there's this book uh, that was uh, written recently about a crime in New York City in the 80s. And okay. uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, about a detective and all his uh, trials and tribulations of uh, being in uh, the police department. And it's, uh, it's called... Um, Damage control. So damage the control. Okay. Damage control. Yeah, and uh, it was uh, it's being adapted as a TV pilot for possible streaming to Netflix or Amazon, whoever picks it up. So of course, uh, production has been halted, but they did right. uh, do a draft of it, and they loved. I uh, I sent them my songs, and they loved Tighter yeah. and Tighter. As soon as the producer awesome. heard Tighter and Tighter. He says, oh, that's it. That's got to be doing the opening credits. You know, so they nice. saw this rap, which is pretty cool. And yeah. uh, Tighter and Tighter's playing, in, you know, in the opening credits. So that's the plan. Um, you know, it, it's still in the uh, early stage. And, of course, you know, now with this going on. You know, yeah. But that's, it's going to be called Manhattan South. So that's Manhattan South? It. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And uh, tighter and tighter uh, doing the opening credits is showing. Oh, my God. You know, that would images. be amazing. That would be. Oh, that would be awesome. That would be amazing, Wouldn't that yeah. be great? 
<laughs> yeah. Oh, we'd be saying a prayer for that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and putting that out there too as well. That would be very cool. Oh, Maron. Listen, I want to I want to thank everyone for tuning in. We have Joanne, we have Jewel, we have Teresa Thibodeau in Florida. Thank you everyone for tuning in and watching. Share. Like my show, share the show. Okay. We're gonna take another quick break for my sponsors. When we come back, more with Pepe Cardona from Alive and Kicking. Today's show is brought to you in part by Tavolo Kitchen and Pizza, located at 1919 Wantaw Avenue in Wantaw. Hey, there's something for every night of the week. Tuesdays, pasta night, wine Wednesdays, Friday, live music from 7 to 10, Sunday brunch. So check them out at 516-308-4892 or www.tavolokitchen.com. They're also on Instagram. They do catering and private parties. So where do you want to go tonight? Are you bored? Oh, oh my god! <laughs> Hold on tight. We're gonna coast this. It's Monday night, and I'm so glad you guys are tuned in and listening. I'm here with Pepe Cardona from Alive and Kicking. He had that wonderful one-hit wonder, tighter and tighter. And um, I want to just say something real quick before I go back to Pepe. Um, I, right now, I'm sponsoring uh, Tavolo um, Kitchen um, is one of my sponsors, um, and they are doing pickup and deliveries. So please give them a call. Also, Coaster's Tavern in East Meadow, they're doing um, special takeouts, pickups, pickups on Saturday and Sundays. So make sure you both give them a call. Please support. Please support these small businesses um, that need to be supported at this time. All right. I just wanted to get that in there. And now we're back with Pepe Cardona. And uh, the man, the myth, the legend from Detroit. <laughs> <laughs> Detroit. Who would have thought I'd end up in Detroit? I have oh, no idea. Good. How did you end up in Detroit? How? Well, well, I met my wife, uh, Maria. Maria, she's God from, bless Maria. Yeah. Uh, she's from Detroit. And uh, she moved away from Detroit to New York when, okay. uh, when she was like 17 or something. But you, you know? did you meet her in New York? In New Rochelle. Oh, you met her in New Rochelle. Okay. Right. And then we moved to City Island. Right. And we were there for uh, like 30 years or so. And um, and then she got a call from her sister uh, saying that her mother, uh, you know, was a little elderly and uh, needed help. And uh, right. could we uh, go there? And so that's what we did. We packed up and uh, came to Detroit. Right. Uh, and then left. Unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Unfortunately... Uh, you know, my, my business of life and kicking is in New York. Yeah. So the last uh, couple of years, I've been, uh, it's been five years since you moved. Uh, I've been spending most of my time in New York. I know you, you're here is, a lot. You're here. You're here a lot. And before, yeah. before this, this all hit us, this COVID-19, how many gigs a year did you actually do between alive and kicking and with Tim? Oh, uh, 130. Roughly. 100, 130 shows. Yeah. Wow. That's, uh -huh. that's amazing. That's amazing. I mean, you know, you, you just don't, you don't get, you, you just don't get um, older, my friends. You get better. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm, I'm trying. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing this vocal teacher again now. Are so, you really? uh, yeah, she's uh, trying to, uh, you know, keep my voice going strong. Right, right. Yeah, she's, uh, she's a great vocal teacher from the Bronx. And it just yeah. it just goes to show you that it's never too late to pursue your dream, and it's never too old to actually look for a vocal coach or someone to, like you said, help you keep your instrument to the best it can be. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. Um she is uh she's awesome her name is Meryl and Meryl? um yeah Meryl uh uh there was a, her last Yo, name. Grace is in the Bronx Grace might look her up <laughs> 
Oh, oh, uh, yeah, that's right. You lose it, Abraham. Oh, yeah. please tell Grace that I'm glad to Grace, what's her name? Meryl around. what? Meryl, Meryl, Meryl. Meryl. All right, you know what? We'll, 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 yeah, we'll, I'm get, going that to, uh, we'll get that information to Grace. <laughs> yeah. I'll get it right now. So do you do you actually um, FaceTime her if she's here and you're there? Do you do vocal warm ups and lessons, you know, via Facebook? Well, the last uh, couple of weeks has been uh, uh, not easy right. doing that, you know. Yeah. So, uh, uh, you know, we we have been doing it, uh, you know, uh, in person. Uh, right. Oh, Newburn, Newburn. N-E-W-N-B-E-R-N, Newburn. Okay. Meryl, Meryl Newburn. Okay, thank you for yeah. that. <laughs> and she's in the uh, Inwood section of Brooklyn, something like that. I mean, of, of the Bronx. Uh-huh. Yeah, and by the way, uh, I am very open with my time. Anybody has any questions for me, uh, they want to uh, know how to get T-shirts, how to do it, whatever, anything at all they have, they can email me. Nice. Anytime. And what's your okay. email? Let's give that out. Okay, it's Peppy P E P E Sing Sims at AOL.com. It's so funny because when I asked you to send me your email address, you know, mine is STV, which stands for Sean Teresa Valerie Sings. That's, yeah, right. TV <laughs> Sings. So when you said uh -huh. that to me, I was like, that's so cool. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. TV Jewel, singing. Jewel, Jewel, Peppy, give a shout out to Jewel. Jewel said she's enjoying the show. Jewel? Jewel, like J-E-W-E-L, Jewel. Oh, Jewel. Oh, like there you singing. go. And Hello, Mike. Jewel. Mike is saying Peppy rocks. There yeah. you go, Mike. All right, I, I got to give you an official shout out, okay? Hello, <laughs> Jewel. Okay. Nice. Go. Thank you, Peppy. That's very sweet of you. All right. So it's Peppy Sings, S I N G S, at AOL.com. And, you know, he, you know, you are the most loving, giving, humble person. I met you. I originally met you at Grace Gudati Matranga's wedding. You oh, were her wedding really? You were her wedding singer. Yes, that's right. And that was, yeah. that was, holy crap, that was, um, let's see, um, I'm going to want to say 15 years, I think it was like 15 years ago or something like that. Yeah, something like that, right? It was uh, what, 1995 or it was something, uh, 2005. Yeah, yeah, something like that. It was, um, yeah, I mean, she she said, oh, I'm going to have a live and kicking at my wedding. And I'm like, really? And she's like, yeah, he does weddings. Peppy does weddings. And I was like, that's so cool. And I know she got up and sang with you and that made her night. And, um, and then we reconnected, um, through Bat Boy. And then I connected you yeah. with Ray and Steve and it was just, you know, it's like a snowball and it's like that six degree of separation. It's crazy. Yeah. And then wait a second, here's something even crazier people. Okay. My husband, Sean, who's a singer, sang with you years ago. You were performing somewhere. He'll remember. I don't know where he is right now. He's inside. You were performing somewhere in New Rochelle or somewhere up there. And you asked Sean to come up and sing. And he yeah. sang. And then, like, you knew him before you knew me. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, boy, Crazy. Sean, is, he's got such a great voice. <laughs> Thank you. He, he's, yeah. he's he's blessed. He's God gave him a gift. And then yeah. you performed at some um, restaurant right here in Wontaw. And I we came to see you. And again, you were so gracious, gracious to have Sean come up and sing. And you joined him. And I, lo I love that video. That's one of my special favorite videos of you guys singing together. I love you yeah. more today than yesterday. That yeah, right. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it was great. It was a great night. It was a great oh, night. I'd like to see that video sometime. I'm going to have to send it to you. Yeah. <laughs> going to have to send it to you. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, so you're in Detroit. You're going to be coming back next week for, um, you come back, you said for two days, you get treatment, and then you go back to, uh, to Detroit. How are things actually in Detroit? I know they're not as chaotic in New York, I'm assuming, but things, things here are a little crazy and, you know, across the country, it's, it's varying. So how are you guys there where you are in Michigan? Um, I'll tell you the truth, Teresa. It's uh, just about exactly the way it is in New York. Really? 
really. Yeah. You know, but you know what? In a way, it's, in a way, it's a good thing that they're taking it very seriously and they're taking the extra measures and extra precautions in advance um, before it gets you know worse. Maybe they could stop it you know before it gets worse. Yeah. Which is great, in fact, you know? I, I was inspired by watching the uh, videos on TV of the uh, hospitals and the ERs in Detroit, and it just was exactly the same thing that New York is going through. You yeah, know? yeah. So I tried to think of a song that, you know, would, would fit with that. And that's when I got, I'm still standing, you know. Yeah, and, uh, I'm still standing, right? Elton John. Yeah. Yep. yeah. That's yeah. another profound song that, you know, there's so many songs and the lyrics are so profound these days, mm -hmm. um, you know, but you have this peppy, strong show that I want everyone to check out on YouTube. And yeah. you, um, you just said you just posted something today, actually, you said, right? Yeah, I posted, uh, uh, I'm still I'm still standing. I changed yeah. the words around. Yeah. And I, I think it was very clever uh, what yeah. I did with the words. And, uh -huh. uh, and, and, you know, it worked out pretty good. And that was my 19th episode, Peppy wow. Strong, which I only started about, what, a month ago? To me. You know, I, every day to get the, the energy to do that after yeah. two videos that I do in one day is about the, my limit. Yeah. You know, but, uh, yeah. well, it, don't, it I mean, don't time. push yourself, listen to your body, rest when it says yeah. rest, yeah. you know, no. but no, you I know, thank make God, thank, listen, I just, listen, I want to, I want to thank everyone for watching and listening. Please share my show, share it and, and check out Peppy on Peppy strong show on YouTube. Um, and I want, um, again, you could, you can actually send Peppy an email if you like to Peppy sings at, yeah, at AOL. And I just want to take this time and opportunity to, um, thank everyone again. Did you want to say something real quick, Peppy? We've got another minute and I have to wrap up. Okay. Yeah, really quick. Uh, this is a little story. Um, when uh, Alive and Kickin' used to perform in yeah. clubs, uh, when we took a break, mm -hmm. we would play this song called Twine Time. Which is what reminds me when you said tea time. <laughs> tea time, time. By, by Alvin Cash and uh -huh. the Crawlers. And this is from 1964. Okay? Wow. And it goes. It's twine time. All right, well, listen, I'm going to wrap up. This is tea time. I want to thank everyone for watching. I want to thank Pepe Cardona. Pepe, I love you with all my heart, honey. And you know my thoughts and prayers are with you. I just want to thank you. Thank you, Pepe. I love you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Love you too. Come back next Monday night. Love you all. Ciao. Stay, stay alive and keep kicking. Keep kicking. Alive and kicking. That's what